Can you mix ipamorelin with CJC1295? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of actually combining them. And you may not ever want to use just CJC1295 alone after learning about the benefits of maximizing the growth hormone expression by combining these two unique molecules. So by the end, you'll be able to unpack exactly how you want to structure your cycling of these peptides. You'll know the benefits and uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn a little bit more about how your amazing body works. And I'm Reagan Archbald, founder of Ageless Future. We do advanced diagnostic testing so that we can determine what peptides are best for you. This is not medical information. I'm not giving you any recommendations or advice. I'm sharing some of the insights that I've learned along the way. And also I learn from you when you plug in the notes in the comments. I've learned so much. So thank you so much for everyone being involved. Okay, so can you use these together? Absolutely, yes. Now, I remember one of the uh, peptide circuits that I was on, I think it was put on by the International Peptide Society, William Seed's original organization. And one of the speakers, he said, when you combine ipamorelin with CJC, you get a seven times greater pulse of growth hormone. And this was based on some data that they found, they saw clinically, and they looked at IGF-1 levels. They also tested growth hormone. And so I've always looked at that and I've just took it at face value. But I did a couple years ago, I started digging into the research and I I found a study that was done in 2006 where they actually looked at healthy adults. So these are not adults with human growth hormone deficiency. It was done in healthy adult subjects. I believe it was done in Montreal. And the title is Prolonged Stimulation of Growth Hormone in Insulin-Like Growth Factor 1, IGF-1, secretion by CJC-1295, a long-acting analog of growth hormone releasing hormone. So they wanted to determine how much does CJC increase it. Now, this one was done with DAC, so a drug affinity complex. Now, when you add in the DAC, I don't recommend that. That's not the way nature made peptides. We want peptides to express the same kind of turn on properties that nature intended. When you have the DAC, the drug affinity complex, you get a longer half-life, but it definitely leads to more downstream side effects. So generally we don't use this with DAC, but this was done with DAC. And so what they did is they gave healthy volunteers subcutaneous doses, and what they did is they measured the growth hormone and IGF-1 over the course of time to assess how it affected exogenous hormone release. So they wanna see, does it really release this? And so after this cycle of two weeks of CJC 1295 with DAC, they found in their conclusion that it did substantially elevated levels of growth hormone, two to tenfold increases, and then they had a corresponding rise in the IGF-1 levels for several days, but they didn't find that it disrupted blood sugar. It didn't cause an increase of cortisol, which is very common when you're using some of these growth hormone peptides. And they found that just the maintenance of just a single injection, some participants just got a single injection and they were able to maintain an elevated growth hormone and IGF-1 over an extended period. So it does help. And then when you combine it with ipamorelin, so here's the interesting thing is, your pituitary gland basically has two sides to it that release growth hormone. You've got the growth hormone side and then you've got the ghrelin. And ipamorelin is more like a ghrelin mimetic. So it helps calm down the hunger. Because if you remember when you were a kid, you had growth hormone all the time, you could eat everything in the house and you're so hungry, but you didn't put on weight because your body was growing. I mean, it's growth hormone. Without growth hormone, our bodies would deteriorate. Our connective tissue literally would fall apart. You wouldn't have muscles to hold up your bones. So we absolutely need it. But after the age of about 35, our growth hormone starts to diminish. And then by the time we're in our 50s, 60s, 70s, it's not functioning at all. I mean, I see clients with IGF-1 levels in the 50s and 60s when we start working together and I ask them, I say, oh, have you noticed any kind of decrease in strength? And they always says, yes, they're devastated because their body is withering. And so when you can use ipamorelin, the benefit is, especially if you're like me and you love sweet things and I don't want any temptations in my life, but uh, what I do is you can use ipamorelin with CJC 
And yes, you're going to have a little bit of this flushing effect from CJC 1295. That's totally normal. It's the activation process that lasts about five minutes. It does not mean that your body is rejecting this. If that flushing effect continues and persists, and you start feeling your throat close up, if you notice any kind of skin irritation, if you have shortness of breath, take some Benadryl quickly, some Zyrtec, some antihistamine to get that down. And that does mean that you probably had what's called immunogenic response to the peptide. That does happen in a small percentage of people, so be aware of that. But the ipamorelin, the nice thing about this, and where you can get an even greater growth hormone spike, so in the study in Montreal, they found a two to 10-fold increase in growth hormone as measuring growth hormone and IGF-1. When you add ipamorelin in, you're going to extend the pulse by about 30 minutes. So that's the real benefit. You don't have to use the drug affinity complex. They were using the drug affinity complex, but if you use ipamorelin in its place, it's going to decrease or inhibit somatostatin. And it's the somatostatin, when you're working on growth hormone, the somatostatin is the body's feedback loop. So the somatostatin said, okay, Reagan's getting growth hormone. He's pushing 50, let's suppress it. So I'm like, no, I want growth hormone because I get better sleep, I recover better, I'm happier, it's great for your brain, great for your heart, great for your muscles. So I use ipamorelin with it. And the benefits of it is you won't have that same hunger. So when you're using CJC 1295, don't ever miss having ipamorelin there. Now, if you're looking to maximize your effectiveness with CJC 1295, always include the ipamorel in there. And if you're looking for the performance enhancement and you don't want the downstream side effects, make sure you pulse it. So you five days on, two days off, do it in a fasted state. That means 90 minutes after dinner. That's a good time to inject this. Just don't eat afterwards, but you know, three hours before you go to bed, generally stop eating. You sleep so much better. And that's a good time to take your CJC ipamorelin. And then make sure that you're exercising. The high intensity interval training does seem to increase growth hormone better than other exercises. So add those in two or three days out of the week. And that's where you can have this ageless future that you're building for yourself, where you get healthier every year, instead of being like most people where they get worse every year. My goal is to get you healthier every year of your life. Really appreciate you being on this channel. Appreciate you being part of our community. One thing that I've done for you, if you want to go deeper, is I've provided a link to my book, The Peptide Blueprint. Go download a free copy of it and I'll see you in the next video.